It's an unusual partnership, a world-class hospital and world-class performing arts organizations, a model in the growing field that brings together health and the arts. Jeffrey Brown reports from Houston for our ongoing series, Canvas. We're just going to get a look at your throat and your vocal cords. Breathe in. We're up close and personal with 25-year-old yeah. opera singer Emily Tragel and her vocal cords. This is her instrument, requiring constant care and attention. Again, E. It's not like, you know, I'm playing the trumpet or a piano, like if something goes wrong, you can see it. You know, it's, it's all in here, so you need the professional to be able to go in and make sure that everything's going well. In July, after multiple tonsil infections, Tragel, a mezzo-soprano, had a tonsillectomy. All went well, and this day she was getting a checkup ahead of the Houston Grand Opera's new season. For someone in your position, what's the problem? I mean, what's the thing you have to deal with or worry about most with your voice? The short answer is everything. <laughs> the long answer is it's incredibly challenging um, to be in a career that there are so many variables attached to it. And so our task as singers is to um, have such a good, solid technical foundation that we can defy whatever odds are thrown at us and just continue to be able to produce a really beautiful sound. And when it's something that's outside of our control, our technical mm -hmm. realm, that's when we end up back here and say, you know, something's not working. Can we do a checkup and make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. We really encourage our singers as vocal athletes. Working with Tragel, Dr. Yin Yu, a laryngologist at the Texas Voice Center at the Houston Methodist Hospital. As she puts it, she's the T in the ENT. She doesn't sing herself, though some of her colleagues do, but she loves the challenge of caring for singers. We think about athletes, right, and they have like this whole team of people that take care of them. And we don't really think about performers, so singers, actors, people who do like use their voice in that capacity. We don't think about them in that same way, but they can also have injuries, right? So they can be performing and have different things happen. Their vocal cords can get swollen. They can have a vocal cord hemorrhage or a bleed whenever they're singing. These are all things that can happen and um, we get to be that team for them. The Texas Voice Center is part of the hospital's highly unusual program, the Center for Performing Arts Medicine. Founded by Dr. Richard Stasny in 1992, it all began with a focus on singers. But then something unexpected happened. Todd Frazier has led the center since 2012. We started to get uh, preachers, uh, newscasters, uh, classroom teachers, anyone that would associate their voice to what they do professionally. And that's when the hospital realized that, yes, there really is something special and unique here, and that's unique to Houston as well. The center then grew to support performing artists of all kinds from Houston's thriving arts community, as well as from all over the country. Crucially, it also developed official relationships with several of Houston's leading performing arts groups. There are a lot of unique health issues that show up in the arts community that deserve a home and deserve uh, uh, a place to, to be cared for. Are you surprised that this is a, a thing now between the hospital and arts organizations? I'm not surprised that it's successful um, because I am from the arts community and, and I really knew that the artists were yearning for a home and a sympathetic place that they would be understood. But I am have to be surprised that a, you know a major hospital would sort of take this on in a way that's sort of unprecedented. They felt it fit with their values to be supporting the arts and culture within the community of Houston, which all the hospitals are in Houston. And the physicians really enjoyed uh, being able to help these talented people making their lives and homes uh, here in Houston. So how is it feeling? It's okay. One major partner, the Houston Ballet, which now has its own on-site clinic, giving dancers like Kellen Hornbuckle daily access to athletic trainers and physical therapists. The types of injuries that ballet dancers get are very unique. Um, it's a very unique population, and while they are performing artists, they are incredible athletes. Kevin Varner is the chairman of orthopedic surgery at Houston Methodist Orthopedic Sports Medicine. It's interesting to look at how things evolved over the last uh, 15 or 20 years in terms of dancer health. And remember, it's a big team approach, right? So you really need a hospital that wants to be a partner because you need 
not just orthopedic surgery, you need nutrition, you need cardiology, and you need primary care sports medicine, so people that take care of the dancer as a whole. When you do that, it really does um, improve dancer health. We're just doing a thing. In this session, Hornbuckle received dry needling, yeah. cupping, massaging, and other treatments to alleviate pain in her legs and prevent serious injury. The big idea, according to Houston Ballet Executive Director James Nelson, changed from reactive to proactive care. So when I was dancing, uh, we never had any on-site care. It was always wait until you're broken, then go to the doctor, then get it fixed. At the end of the day, it's a very short career. And so to be able to give an artist a year, two years, five years, more of this precious time, is such a gift, and I attribute a lot of that to this partnership with Methodist. Um, you won't find this kind of relationship in most ballet companies. Back at the hospital, Fraser sees this kind of focus on the performing arts only growing in the future. Many universities are starting arts and health certificates, music therapy degrees, and even medical schools are looking at uh, internships in artist health or how artists might be cared for uh, to develop those skills, and it is growing. Meanwhile, singer Emily Tragel is ready to go. Your throat looks great. I mean, I, I saw it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew my tonsils were so big? I had no idea. But now that I don't have them, I certainly notice their absence. I'm very excited about this coming season and seeing how, how things change now that I don't have mm -hmm. this obstacle. Tregel performs with the Houston Grand Opera later this month in Giuseppe Verdi's Falstaff. For the BBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Houston, Texas.